So you're probably wondering how I ended up in that situation. Well, today I'm trying to install a really unique pepper spray self-defense system, which is actually not meant for vans. It's originally meant for commercial trucks, so I'm trying to make up the install as I go, but essentially it's pretty straightforward. Just some tubing that runs underneath the vehicle connected to a pretty large canister of bear spray or pepper spray, whichever one you choose. And I just think this is such a great self-defense tool, whether I'm camping in the woods and there's a bear on the hood of my vehicle and I can't get it to go away, or if I'm in New York City and there's people at my windows and they won't go away and it can get really scary. I've heard a lot of stories, I've seen a lot of things and I can make a very imaginative stories of my mind every night when I go to sleep. And so this is really just for peace of mind. But also I had my very first break in attempt last week at 2.30 in the morning. So I take safety very seriously. So the install is now 100% complete. There was a lot of trial and error and kind of just making it up as I go because they haven't really done these on vans before. There's a lot on trucks or RVs. So I had to kind of find my own path to be able to route these Tube, this tubing, we're basically going to recreate a scenario that it would replicate what it would really be like if I needed to use it. So all of the doors will be closed, all of the windows will be closed, I will be in the vehicle, I'll pull the pin, spray, hopefully it will do its job and spray all over from where the tubing is. But yeah, so without further ado, let us test this pepper spray booby trap. <laughs> All right, so before anyone rushes to the comments, I did test this out beforehand outside of the vehicle with a mask on and it worked so well, shot right out of the back of the van and I was really impressed. But of course it couldn't have gone that well for the real test. All right, we're on my computer real quick. Um, all right, step one, pull the pin. Step two, okay, I'm so nervous. It burns in my throat, it got in my mouth. Oh, I have to sleep in here tonight. Oh my God, it's awful. I checked it. My lips burn. How am I gonna fix this? I have I have nowhere to sleep. I might have to get a hotel room tonight. So I am a very stubborn person and I did not want to have to make a third day of this install. So I decided to throw on my gas mask and do some testing. My first theory was that I did not have the tube fully connected, but that was not it. And then I thought maybe the tubing just wasn't straight like in the first test and it had been curved with how I was holding it in the van and that caused a problem and skewed it. But after a few days of reflection, I think I may not have cut the tubing perfectly straight down. So it did not have a good connection with the container and having that curved line is what really did it and that's why it sprayed a crazy like that but looks like i'll have to wait for another day to resume testing and really find out the answers no all right so we're on our way to our first stop which is to do all of my laundry i want everything that was in the area of pepper spray done washing my bedding I just i also had laundry to do so i mean it's a little bit convenient i guess um, and then they have outlets so I can sit in there and do my work and yeah, now I'm just gonna vibe for a minute um, and just try to find some peace. I have a song that I always listen to when I'm having a bad day <laughs> and it's from the Trolls movie and it's always worked. When I first worked in Disney World, I was really bad at my job to be honest. It was very difficult. I was operating roller coasters. There's a lot of stress in it. I just wasn't great at it and it was a lot of pressure if I'm bad at my job, people spend longer time in line, someone could get hurt, so I would, on my breaks, go to the bathroom and in the mirror sing myself the Trolls song. And it always worked. So, we're gonna try to switch my attitude around and just feel better. So when being out in the desert, I have always given myself the rule that I will not stay out here when it's dark 
because my ProMaster stock lights are just not very bright and most people actually almost immediately replace them and it's on my list to do but not at the top of my budget so I just made the rule to not stay out here after dark but because it is so dark I have accidentally got turned around and can't find the one tiny ramp back onto the highway as it just blends in a little too well in the darkness. So I'm literally using the light pole from my anchor power station battery as if I'm like an angler fish and sticking it out my window to get more light in the direction I want it, which I have no idea what direction is which at this point. Plus, while doing all of this, I'm having to swerve holes and ditches to make sure I don't get stuck and they are everywhere out here. <sighs> We're not getting stuck and then also not being able to... <laughs> what is my life? No, really, what is my life? So good news, I did eventually inevitably find the ramp. Also, if you're wondering how I'm currently even standing to be in the van at this moment, all the windows are down and the air is on full blast circulating. But also what I did not record because I was a little busy scarfing down an entire bag of mini starbursts because they were the only thing that quelled the fire taste of hell burning in my mouth. And then I also went into a self-loathing spiral because I touched my eye while scrubbing down the back of the van and my eyes were burning. It was terrible. That's why half my makeup is messed up. And that is also why I missed a whole hour you know, I was panicking, the sun was setting, and I was unsure what to do. I just threw open all the doors, drove around the desert like a maniac, doing the best kind of donuts I can do in a ProMaster van. So the air was passing through while I drove, and just trying to get rid of the smell. Um, but yes, I ended up deciding not to get a hotel, and so our next stop is a laundromat. Before landing on this option, I ended up calling about 10 different hotels. And while hotels in Vegas are actually pretty cheap thanks to the fact that they are mostly in casinos, it is very hard to find one with an open parking lot because the van doesn't fit in parking garages. And then to add to all of that, I really needed to do all of my laundry tonight and wash my bedding now that it's been covered in the awful smell of pepper spray. And unfortunately, all these hotels in the area only had laundry service where you could send it in to someone to do. And it's already 7 p.m. so I wouldn't be able to have it done by the end of the single night hotel stay. So I'd have to get two hotel nights to do laundry at these locations and I just didn't think it was worth it and I just really wanted to get my bedding washed and my clothing washed because if you relook at the clip I actually had the pepper spray explode right over my unzipped suitcase of all of my clothing. So here we are. This place is a little sketchy at night but I just think if anyone even wants to break into my van I think it'd be hilarious right now. I have the ultimate booby trap right now. I can't even stand to breathe in the back so I just think it'd be kind of funny like go ahead try to break in. Let's see what happens. I genuinely cannot believe I'm about to say this but this place might actually smell worse than pepper spray. Next up, let's wash these sheets. This should help a lot. It's definitely sprayed on here when it's sprayed. <coughs> oh, the inhale before the sneeze of pepper spray was disgusting. Oh, it burned, okay. Remember this? Step one, pull the pin. I'm gonna go attach this now. I like sneezed so many times, my nose is now burning again. I'm gonna close these windows to go into the laundromat. Not all the way, but most of the way. And I already regret the decision, but what's he gonna do? Maybe this is strange, but I actually find doing laundry to be one of my favorite van life chores. I like the routine of it. The free electricity to plug in my power station if I want, or my laptop. The free air conditioning on a hot day, and of course the free internet. It's a pretty good deal, honestly. I mean, as long as you find a good spot, which that can be one of the annoying things about constant travel, is you have to find a new laundromat, a new dentist, a new mechanic, a new doctor, whenever you need one in a new city. So you have to learn to get very good at reading reviews and scouring the internet before paying any money somewhere. I've had laundromats make my clothes smell weird before and that's the worst because you have to go to another laundromat and pay to do your laundry all over. Plus, with the laundromat, they usually make you get a laundry card, which also costs money to initially get, which is how they try to get you to come back to their laundromat. But it's annoying as a van lifer when I'm constantly traveling and not likely to come back anyway, and then I end up with extra money on the card as well because you have to put money on it ahead of time and having to constantly buy new cards and just... 
all of that stuff. But I guess that just comes with the van life territory. Getting used to constant change and being good at adapting. Going with the flow, which is definitely the mantra of today. Oh, every time my hair hits my eye, I feel like there's pepper spray in it. I have the very strong urge to fold all of this and put it away. However, I need to like scrub the back first and I'm not sure I can do that without the doors being open and like it being and like moving things around. I'm not sure I can do that at nighttime, but um, as of right now, it's just mostly my, my lips are burning all the time. Um, and occasionally like I'll taste the pepper spray like strongly. Um, if I take a deep breath when I'm standing in the back, that's no bueno, so bad. <laughs> um, that breath right there, that one was even bad. Um, I can reopen the windows again now. Um, but yeah, my eyes occasionally burn. It's just little things, little things. So I'm gonna scrub and then I will go and take a shower and then find something else to do. To no one's surprise, I did none of that. I just sat in the front seat eating nachos. Anyway, um, I'm gonna head over to Planet Fitness and wash off all of the pepper spray and hopefully that will help. I know water isn't good for pepper spray, but uh, they don't have milk showers at Planet Fitness, so hopefully that's fine. <laughs> The local radio station literally played those songs back to back. So I'm not sure who was in charge that night, but they definitely had something going on. Let's do a pre-shower smell test of the pepper spray levels in the back of the van. <laughs> it's honestly not bad. Like I'm breathing, I'm not sneezing, I'm not coughing. We're on a good track. All right, let's get it off of me. And then I think we might be back in business, baby. <laughs> Luckily with today's incident, it only meant I had to do some pretty normal, typical van life routine things. And back to Planet Fitness we are, but this was not just a basic shower, unfortunately. As soon as the water started hitting my skin, it started to burn and create like this red, bright rash, which was so painful and really hard to wash my hair or do anything. So we rushed our way through, but tried to get as much pepper spray off my skin and my body as possible so I don't track it back anywhere else. I want to be done with pepper spray. If I never feel <laughs> the sting of pepper spray ever again, it will be too soon. My arm is burning so bad. There's like a rash on it. When the water hit it, it was like my skin was on fire. And then like the after effect, like even now, it like is like a toned down version of like my skin being on fire. It's terrible and I never want to do this ever again. <laughs> it's also under my fingertips and it burns there too. I think if I just go to sleep, I can ignore the feeling, right? Like that's how to get rid of pain. You just turn off your brain, you go to sleep. Um, that's the plan. I'm going to put up window covers and sleep here in the front seat tonight. So this was essentially the sleep setup last night. I like put my legs on a diagonal sometimes. Sometimes I would put my head against the door. Sometimes I try to like sleep here. It was, there was always something uncomfortable. I used to car camp and I'd sleep with the front seat like this because I, when I car camped across America, I was living with everything that I had at the time. because I was actually moving across the country and I couldn't recline the seat at all. So I was sleeping like stick up straight for a whole month. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not who I used to be. I'm not as tough. This was very uncomfortable. My neck hurt when I first woke up. I also, um, pepper spray update. My arm doesn't burn anymore. I'm under my fingertips still burns sometimes. And when I put makeup on this morning, like around my eye burned a little bit. Um, but overall, 
We're doing good. <laughs> and with that, we have had a- another crazy, unfortunate van life adventure. I'll see you in the next one.